We come down to uh, Benwick on the Fens for a bit of roach fishing today. A bit of practice for me for the Winter League final, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. We come to the free section, solid with fish already, can see loads topping. And we're going to just uh, introduce three new floats and just have a little relook the existing range because I've got 12 floats now in the Siwai range, so it's so it's increased over the last couple of years. The floats we're running at the moment is a short diamond, which is a fibre tip wire stem, quite a sensitive float for squat and pinky fishing. Largest size you can get in this is 0.4, so it's like a far shelf delicate float. Works well with a little back shot that actually, just level with the uh, top of the bristle, so like an inch from the from the float eye. Real favourite of mine is the hemp. This has got a hollow tip in it, round body. Again, comes up, only goes up to 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is a new size actually, so that goes 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Again, a far bank float, a bit more stable and a bit less sensitive, but fishes really well when there's a ripple, a bit of wind, great to get in shallow water. And you can see it nicely because of the tip. We've got diamond, which is a float I've used quite a lot here at Benick on the match length, especially when the water's not moving too much with a bulk, just to get it quickly to the bottom. And this float has got a fibre tip and shows up lift bites very well because of the shape of the top of the body and the slender, overall slender shape, wire stem again. So that's a, that's a good float. Two of the originals, used these floats loads over the last three years. Uh, that's carbon squat on the on your left and standard squat on your right as you're looking at the screen. So the difference, the floats are identical. The difference is the tip. One has a carbon tip, which is the thicker one. The carbon is very heavy and doesn't have any buoyancy, but sits really well in tow and it fishes really nicely. It trims up the same every time. The other float has a hollow tip and uh, it's a bit more visible, basically. Sort of, I wouldn't say one's particularly more sensitive than the other, but the carbon can be hard to see sometimes if you've got a mottled sort of light due to foliage on the far bank. So it's two versions of the same float. They both go up to one gram. So another one of my original canal floats is the chop. This float is for fishing chopworm. <laughs> Little bits of chopworm, dead maggots for skimmers, bigger fish. It's not a float to put a whole lobworm on, but if you're fishing, double dead maggot over depth or, or red worms or a head of a dendrobina. That's a great float for fishing sort of two thirds across for skimmers, especially on the Grand Union Canal places like Leighton Buzzard. Very stable because of the shape and the wire stem goes into the hollow tip. So it's, it's actually reasonably sensitive as well. So that's a good float for fishing for skimmers. Got the punch and again, one of the original ones, hollow tip, wire stem, slender shape, designed for fishing punch, really, sort of over the near shelf. Um, it's also a good squat float in the smaller sizes, strung out. That goes up to 0.75, lovely little float. And then this is my river float. So you can see by the shape, designed for sort of holding back. It's got quite a long plastic tip, it goes up to four grams this float with a wire stem. Great float on places like the Yare, especially, where it's a bit choppy, there's boats, you need a stable float with a decent tip in and quite a long tip to get, you know, if there's waves and stuff, it makes it sort of easy to hold back. You can work it well. And the last of the original ones is the Lake. Carbon stem, plastic tip, slimmer body. I'm not sure I chose the right name for this float because it's a really all round model that you can use for all sorts of things. Carbon stem is generally better when there's sort of good conditions, less wind, less chop. But this fish, fish, this sort of fish is really well in rivers and lakes. So it's just like a good all round float for fishing for roach and skimmers really. So that's the range as it has been. I'll just pop these in here. And so now I've got three, three new floats that I've bought out, all to do sort of specific jobs that I felt were missing from the range. And really all the floats are sort of, I make them for myself primarily to suit the fishing I do. And then hopefully other anglers have the same point of view and like doing the same type of fishing and it's the sort of the float suit them as well. But I sort of choose what I want and then hope it goes well. So anyway, this is a new one. This is called a steady body up, quite a thick plastic tip wire stem. So I like using this float 
Strung out on rivers like the Avon fishing hemp, it's brilliant for that, you can control it. This body shape is really popular in Italy in still water, believe it or not. And it, because a lot of the time they flick the rig out past their pole tip, they have 13 metre limits and the float tends to stay out away from their tip. That's especially when they're fishing for Carasio. But this float fishes very well on lakes. Uh, I fish, for example, the Warren Lake at Meadowlands a lot. And when there's wind and tow and it's a shallow lake, this float really sits well and you can hold it back. Um, it's best fished with a bit of line, at least sort of 80 centimetres of line. Um, it comes from 0.2 to 0.5, so only in small sizes, but it's actually a really good float in lakes as well as, as rivers and not a popular shape in the UK for lakes, but you know, if you try it, you'll see it does work. This one is basically the same as my existing pencil but going in bigger sizes and with a thicker plastic tip. Um, I went to France twice last year and fished on a canal in a place called Bethune, where the next year's World Championships is going to be. And this float shape is really popular in France. And this canal was quite deep. It had massive container ships on it, you know, ships, boats that are, that are enormous. And when they go past, they, they cause a massive disturbance. And for some reason, this was the best float to fish in that canal and, and I know they use this float a lot, this type of float a lot in France in similar venues. It's very sensitive so we were bloodworm fishing, it's a slim float but not too sensitive in the tip because there was a lot of movement on the water so you didn't want a float that's just going to keep dragging under at the slightest thing. So I've called it Pencil Plus, it goes up to one and a half grams from, starts at point eight, so it's a bigger float. Type of float I'm going to try on the Gloucester this year, I think it will be good and uh, it is sensitive but with the plastic tip not too sensitive the body shape is making it sensitive so that's like quite a specialized float but again i wanted to make it for my own fishing so it's in the range and this is the last one uh, this is a float that alex bates sort of wanted me to make and put in the range it's called oh, we've called it magic roach it's a sci magic roach it's a wire stem it's a fiber tip quite sensitive similar body to my squat floats this goes from 0.4 up to 2 grams so it's a float that i know alex has used on little pool i've used it on the thames on the thames festival i had three lovely days fishing two of the days i used this float i ended up with 50 pound of silver fish over the three days quite sensitive but it sits really well uh, similar to an old preston float i think that alex used to use a lot and it's a sort of yeah, I haven't designed it, but I put it in the range because Alex asked me to and, it, and it's quite popular and it complements the other floats I've got. It's a good sensitive float. So there's 12 floats now all together. Um, probably keep going a little bit more with one or two, I guess. It's a bit of a passion of mine, the floats. And uh, there's a bit of an explanation, explanation even. And we're going to do some fishing now, catch one a bung, try these new floats and uh, just enjoy ourselves really. Okay, so here we are on the free section at Benick. i um, going to do a very simple approach. Today's a bit of a practice for me. There's a lot of fish here and I want to get sort of, get my elastics right and try a few different hooks. So it's not really that much of an instructional video. It's more about just showing the floats and having a fish and a, and a mess around. So I'm going to fish a line on a top five um, with ground bait and pinkies and hemp, sort of pretty standard method. And I'm going to pot some hemp on the top seven plus a dolly butt to fish probably with the steady float over that might lose feed a bit and uh, that's my two approaches um, like I say I'm gonna have a bit of a mess around with hooks and elastics today so that's the main point for me personally and then we're gonna show the floats off so that's it So I've cupped in three big balls full of dead pinkies and live pinkies and some hemp and uh, gone in and actually started catching rud, more rud than anything else actually. And I um, started on a 0.8 pencil plus, shotted with a bulk of shot and pulled that bulk down to the top of uh, my hook length straight away because of the amount of fish and I've got a 12 centimetre hook length of 010 to a 16 Hydra 601, which is quite a strong hook. 
it's a hook I use a lot in Italy for fishing for little fish. And so I was getting intercepted on the drop a lot. Like I say, the fish were quite small. So fished for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. So I've just put up the same float, but in a 1.25, shotted with a non-toxic olivet, just to see if I get through these small fish and if there's bigger ones on the ground bait. The ground bait's activating and pinging, there's little bubbles. There's a stack of fish here, little fish. It's just a question of, will this heavier rig sort out the bigger fish? It might not. It might be better with the lighter one, but I want to try it. It's a little practice session. This heavier float might be better with the bulk a little bit away, further away from the hook, just to give it a bit of a on the drop in the last little bit of water. But that's really the type of thing. See, I wouldn't say that this heavier rig is actually better so far. I'm just going to shallow it up a bit. I've got a little bit of weed. The other thing I've done is tried threading the pinky up the hook. The pinkies I've got are quite fresh. You probably do with some that are a week old, you know, a bit tougher. But with the lighter rig, I could thread the pinky up the shank and catch several fish on the same bait. So we just, see, I'll put that pinky on normal. It's a little bottle top skimmer. So the slim design of the float's working well. It shows up sort of lift bites or fish intercepting the bulk. I haven't had any tangles, haven't had any wrap overs. I'm happy with the hook. I haven't bumped any fish. So they're not the biggest fish in the world, but it could be just what's here. But the good thing is on my other line where I've potted in just hemp, I've actually put a few casters in that hemp as well is I've sort of got a line with no ground bait, so we'll see if the fish are bigger over there. I can see it fizzing already. Look at that, that's foul looks. <laughs> I think we'll put that one back. Eh? Yeah, so I'm going to give it another five minutes with this heavy rig, but I already sort of feel that the, the lighter one was better. But you've got to try these things. The other good thing with these floats being plastic tips in this model, you can actually cut the tip down. If you're a, uh, that's a better fish, look. That's a rud. If you want to shorten the tip, it's very easy uh, and doesn't affect the float. Just trip it, trim it down with a pair of scissors or nail clippers. So I've started short, potted in some ground bait, started fishing uh, top three plus one, and uh, got inundated by a tiny little rud straight away. So I bulked my rig, I've only got a 12 centimetre hook length on anyway, but I bulked my rig right down to the knot, and that was quite good. Caught quite well, potted in another ball or two, kept fishing, so, because the fish were quite small, I decided to put a bigger rig up. So I stopped and put a gram and a quarter pencil plus on and with an olivet and sort of started fishing like that. And it wasn't really better because it was like a little bit too positive. So I pulled the olivet away from the knot and I fished with a, a bulk and one dropper with that rig and also started throwing in little balls, little nuggets of ground bait. And what happened, I caught quite well to start with and basically it got a load of uh, predator interest. So we've had sort of, I guess they're pike swirling right on top of the ground bait, sent the fish a bit erratic and uh, sort of made a bit of a mess of it, couldn't get it sort of nice. So went back to the point eight Went back to potting rather than throwing because I think the noise attracted the predators and it sort of settled down and started catching nicely again. So 
So I was quite happy with my hook, which was a 16 Hydra 601, which is a hook I've used a lot in Italy for bagging little fish, little carassio and carp. It's a good strong hook. You can also thread the pinky up it, which was a good little ploy. So I haven't fished for that long, but it's all come to the conclusion that potting ground bait is better than throwing it here in this type of scenario, if there's predators about. Um, rig wise, you want a positive rig, but possibly not too heavy. And if you want to fish with a heavy rig, have to bulk a little bit away from the hook length. Perch. So that's been good. I tried, I tried fishing a five elastic through a whole top kit. That was good. And I tried a 1.2 mil hybrid elastic just through my number one and two. And that was good as well, to be honest. Probably a bit nicer, actually. A little bit sort of more forgiving while still retaining a bit of power for lifting the fish out. So sort of quite happy with that. Um, I'll do a couple more top kits up like that, I think. And then this further line, I potted in hemp with a few casters mixed in, which I don't normally do. I've actually sort of put it a little bit in the wrong place. I put it a bit to my left and now the, the sort of river started flowing to the right. But the fish I've caught out there have been a better stamp. Not necessarily catching a better weight, because I'm getting less fish, but they're bigger fish. I've tried hemp over the top. Um, I've tried hair rigged hemp, and I've, to be honest, I didn't get a bite on it. So I might be a bit early for that, but either fishing a pinky or a big maggot, a few on a caster. I've had this stamp fish, which obviously bigger fish. I haven't loose fed there yet. I'm going to pot it in again, try and keep the fish in one spot. So yeah, so good little practice. There's a lot of fish here. Sort of got the choice of fishing ground bait and pinkies and catching a bit of everything, which could be rud, you know, from half an ounce to three ounce, roach up to three ounces, but a lot of little fish, you know, variety of sizes. Or fishing this line where there's less bites uh, bigger fish, but I think I just need to refeed this and, and settle it down and th this line could be good in a little while, I think, when there's more fish there. Well, there's a few fish there now. So float-wise, like I said, I fished a 0.8 pencil plus short, and then I moved to a gram and a quarter with an olivette, and then across, well, across, it's down the middle, really. I'm fishing a half gram steady, which is really uh, working nicely in the sort of rivers flowing a little bit. It's a nice positive flow. Got a few planes going overhead. Tench, is it a pike? What do you reckon, boy? Tench, Tinker, we, we talked it up as well. So we're literally just about finishing filming. Simon's got a Tench, it must be a good four pounds because I've just seen it and I'm right above him. Hang on there, mate. <laughs> Just hang on. 
It's a real dark coloured one. Nice. Look, the old faffer's hanging on. Whilst we were filming, we were talking about tension. There was lots of fizzing, and we thought they were pike through the ground bait, but some of them did look a bit tenchy. But the old Alka Seltzer, he's done him. He's got his head out of the water. Come on, Simon, don't lose it now. Get in there. I estimated about four pounds from the bridge. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, missing half its tail. What's that one? Oh, don't lose it now, mate. <laughs> For you match hangers, this must be the biggest fish of the season. Yeah, I can't really deal with it. No, I'd use that as bait. <laughs> nice fish, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably not four pound, but no. it's a great fish to finish off. Well done, buddy. And that'll do, wouldn't it? Yeah, today? got a thumbnail now, anyway. Okay, so we finished the session and the uh, two hooks I've used have been an IM601 Hydra, which is a barbed hook obviously, and an IM510, which is a silver barbed long shank hook. So I started on the 601 in a 16, that's, these are full wings, but I used a 16 to start with, which was good. It's a nice strong hook. It's got enough of a shank that I can thread the pinky up it. And then the fish, Sort of, I wouldn't say they wised up, but they got harder to catch and there was a real mixture of sizes. So I went down to a 20 and a 510, which I can thread the pinky up if I want to, or just hook it on normally. It's very sharp, a little bit smaller, bumped less fish on this because some of the fish were small, they got small mouths, so you need a small hook. Um, but that's a good little strong small hook, so that was good today. Uh, float wise, caught most of the fish on the Pencil Plus in a gram and a quarter just tried to bomb through the little fish to get a slightly bigger stamp. There's a lot of little fish shallow here, to be honest, but um, so I've used that. I just cut about five mil off the tip because there's so many fish here, we're fishing quick. Just wanted the float to stand up and, and set just a bit quicker, but that's been really good. It hasn't flipped over, haven't bumped many fish. Uh, I've used that on a five elastic through the whole top section, but a hybrid 1.2 mil just through the tip, just through this bit, that was, uh, Probably a little bit better actually, I preferred that. So we've had a great little practice session. I've caught lots of little rud, little roach, a few better fish, a bonus tench, which was just on pinkies out of the blue. So, but there's been tons of pike here. Uh, Andy thinks there's some big perch here as well. There's been striking, there's been fizzing, there's obviously tench here as well. So it's been quite hard to line up the small fish consistently because big fish have been coming into the swim but it's been a brilliant little uh, sort of session used the floats got into the swing of catching plenty of fish and uh, absolutely brilliant weather as well so a great day so here we are this is the uh, catch from today fish for about two and a half hours got double figures of small fish and a chunky tench very welcome haven't caught one of them for a while a lot of roach, little rud, odd little skimmer, some little perch and one half decent one. I think there's a lot of big fish moving around this section at the moment, which has made it interesting. But fantastic day's fishing. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Got a little bit of insight into the new floats and the hooks and the tackle and uh, roll on the Winter League final. <laughs>